Hello. Um, now begins the bearded part of the session between <laughs> Chip and I. Um, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, I'm here to talk to you. I'm from the University of Virginia, Jason Downer, and I'm here representing a bunch of colleagues, both from UVA and uh, UCLA, UC Davis, University of North Carolina have done work over the last 10 to 15 years on understanding and improving the quality of teacher-child interactions and specifically I'm going to talk about some coursework and some coaching work that we've been doing. This has been funded by Foundation for Child Development, Department of Ed, IES, and NICHD among others. So if you take nothing else away from my 10 to 11 minutes, it's this point here, which is that teacher-child interactions matter, and you've heard that uh, across both panels already as a key mechanism by which kids are learning in early care and education environments. And really, you could substitute adult for teacher, right? Because um, some others have also talked about parents at home. Uh, early learning is essentially a social process, and it really is the interactions that children are having with each other uh, and with the adults in their classrooms or at home that's the medium for them learning and developing in these settings. And so essentially there's, you know, there have been a lot of debates around what quality means for early care and education settings. And, you know, I'm here to argue that the interactions, the interactions that are happening uh, equal quality, that this is what we're shooting for, uh, for kids to experience. There's been a, a good bit of work done in the last decade to suggest that although these are extremely complicated processes, um, they can be observed in standardized ways in classrooms so that we can get some sense of what this looks like um, at a behavioral level. And when you're able to do that, um, you can test to what extent these interactions when you observe them out in the real world uh, are the ingredients that are connected up to the types of early learning and development that we're looking for um, birth through third grade. And so I'm here to talk a little bit about that today and how uh, there is a number of different professional development opportunities now that have been studied and shown effective in targeting these kinds of interactions um, and in impacting them. So just a, a quick overview, there are lots of different ways of thinking about the interactions that adults have with kids, um, but one way to organize them is into three buckets, uh, one being Emotionally supportive interactions, the, the responsive, sensitive kind of responses um, to kids' needs that have been described earlier. Uh, organization of the classroom around proactive management of behavior, productive learning time, uh, keeping children engaged on task. And then instructionally supportive interactions, which is really focused on helping kids become good critical thinkers and problem solvers, providing in-depth types of feedback as kids are grappling with, with new uh, learning opportunities in classrooms. Now, there have been a number of studies um, across thousands of classrooms at this point, uh, starting in, in preschool age and going up through the elementary school classrooms, that, that suggest when you go in and observe these three aspects of, of interactions that uh, our classrooms are doing reasonably well on those emotional support and classroom organization interactions. There's still room for improvement, um, but if you're looking up here at the scale and you think of you wanting to be on the far right, um, you're seeing a lot of, of classrooms up there, um, but also some spread, right? Uh, the place that we're really struggling as a field is in these, in these instructional interactions, these really rich, cognitively engaging interactions. Those are falling far more on the, the left side of the scale, and there's a lot of room for improvement here. So the other thing that's been done in these, these large longitude and observation studies is to connect these aspects of interactions to elements of kids' learning and development. Uh, so this is just one study uh, that was done in state-funded pre-K uh, that showed that when you had assessments of emotional support and instructional support, that they align with the types of interactions you'd expect, right? That, that teachers who are responsive and sensitive to kids' needs have kids who are showing more social competence during their four-year-old preschool year and fewer behavior problems. And those uh, instructional supports are, are leading to language development and literacy development and math. And one thing I'll point out here is that um, although there are a lot of structural elements that are important about classroom environments, like the ratio of, of adults to children and the educational background of teachers, these are not as regularly directly linked to outcomes. And so I put this out here to suggest that the, 
there are complicated relationships among all these things, but the, the key uh, ingredient, obviously, in how kids are learning is what's happening on the front line as they're interacting with their peers and, and with their teachers. And so it makes a lot of sense um, to target that directly in our professional development and, and in-service programs. So I'm going to tell you about a couple of these um, that uh, my colleagues and I have been working on over the last few years. Uh, one is a course. Uh, this course is something that was developed that is heavily focused on uh, helping teachers to understand the types of interactions that they're having with kids in an intentional way uh, that leads to development. And it's, uh, it's a typical 14-week course. Uh, it, was, it was conducted by, uh, in a very standardized way, heavily emphasized uh, videotapes that were gathered from classrooms across the country. And so it was a lot of analysis of what is actually happening in classrooms other people's classrooms, not necessarily their own, and, and emphasize building uh, the ability to see what's happening in those classrooms and how it leads to, to kids being successful. So in a randomized control uh, trial where we looked at teachers who received that coursework and those who had business as usual, we're actually able to show that teachers' knowledge of effective interactions um, was higher. Uh, directly after completing a course, as well as a, a year later as we followed them up. Uh, we also had a really interesting assessment where teachers were asked to look at a videotape uh, of another teacher and uh, assess the types of interactions that they saw that were effective in those. And again, the teachers in the course were better at doing that um, than teachers that were in the control group. And they sustained the ability to do that um, over the course of the following year. Now you may ask, okay, that's all fine and good, right? But what about somebody who's mentioning, so what actually happens in practice? Um, so we also were able to do observations of the, the teachers' interactions in the classrooms and showed that that area of instructional support in which the field is struggling, um, that we're having really good-sized effects on instructional support from the teachers' uh, participation in this course. And there's even some sustained, although a lower effect, uh, an entire year later with a new group of kids in their classroom. So some exciting new things uh, around the course. Uh, a colleague, Bridget Hamry and Jennifer Lokasai Crouchar, have actually translated it into an, an online version through, through some IAS funding and are currently testing that now, but have gotten very good feedback uh, around feasibility from teachers that are participating. And in fact, I don't know if anybody's in, been involved in any MOOCs, these massive openly online courses. They actually created uh, one of those off of this um, with, a, again, a focus on interactions and several thousand people across not just the country, but the world uh, participated this in the fall. So we're very excited about, about where this is going and hope to test uh, the impacts of some of this online work, as it sounds like several folks are doing. So the other area that we've been focusing on in professional development is on coaching, um, which TJ uh, discussed a little bit a minute ago. So the program we've been working on is called My Teaching Partner. And it's a video-based coaching approach in which teachers have a video camera in their classroom. Uh, they videotape themselves interacting uh, with their kids. And they share that with a coach who then reviews it uh, and actually through an online portal provides feedback around very specific interactions um, that they and the teacher have agreed on um, he or she's going to work on in their practice. Um, then they meet um, either together or um, on the phone. And they come up with an action plan for what to do next. And so we've, we've now finished two uh, RCTs of this work. And uh, again, looking at the, the actual interactions that teachers are having in their classroom, you're getting moderate to uh, large effect sizes um, on the classroom, the class uh, observation system. We do tend to see the largest effects in instructional support. There's the greatest room for growth there. Um, and a lot of the, the intentionality has been around building up that aspect of teachers' practice and interacting with kids. Um, I'll also point out that uh, these, these findings now across two different studies are also consistent across all teachers. So we've looked at whether it's moderated by different conditions of, you know, what kind of education they're bringing in, experience, those kinds of things. And uh, you get the same kind of impacts across everyone. So we've also looked at the, the impacts of this coaching focus on interactions um, on children. And at the pre-K level, um, both in state-funded pre-K and then also in a, a, a broader array of programs serving three through five-year-olds, uh, we're seeing small effects on a variety of child outcomes, some more self-regulatory and social in nature, and others more academic. 
and have begun some recent work uh, in elementary school, one in particular where we're, we're uh, matching or combining the MTP coaching with a social emotional curriculum called 4Rs, um, in which we're seeing uh, some quasi-experimental impacts on uh, some of the social cognitive aspects uh, that undergird some of, some aggressive behavior, like hostile attribution bias and, and uh, negative negotiation strategies, as well as some more social competence and academic skills. And there's other work uh, around MTP paired with different types of content or different types of curriculum uh, that are occurring, some right now in Baltimore City, uh, with early career teachers. So just to end, uh, with from this work, some of the key elements um, that I would suggest ought to be a focus of in-service training. Um, one, again, if I leave you with one thing is this point, right, that um, we should always come back to the focus on the interactions that, that teachers and caregivers are having with kids. Um, in particular, those interactions that the field has uh, good, solid knowledge is linked to kids' development. Uh, the second thing that we're learning is uh, it's, it's not enough to, to have effective teacher-child interactions in a vacuum. Um, they need to be paired with evidence-based content or curriculum, right? So you can, you can implement something uh, well through teacher-child interactions, but if there's not something um, of quality to implement around content for, for children to learn, then the interactions themselves uh, may not be as, as uh, connected to child's development. Another piece, just to underscore something that TJ said, is that uh, all these in-service opportunities need to be as practice-focused as possible, which means they're about what's happening in a teacher's classroom um, or another teacher's classroom that they're having a chance to analyze and think about, um, but is not just theory-based and has this follow-up aspect to it. Um, so both the course, which is a semester long, as well as the coaching that we've done, has this repeated coming back to um, various elements of practice. And then the final piece, you know, we've, we've used uh, quite a bit of technology. I think there's a lot of promise here um, in terms of using technology to provide um, more intense experiences. So the coaching, the, the videotaping, which has become easier and easier and more portable, can provide a really intense feedback experience um, for early care provider. And the online, either coursework or coaching, is a way to try to build in some efficiencies and reach folks that perhaps can't get there in person. Thank you.